So I'll try to shortly tell you about the basis. And the basis means you will have to add more and more to your knowledge. A couple of words about myself. My name is Anton. I represent QA community Kamaka, which was founded in Minsk. We regularly organize international conferences, workshops, trainings. Please join us. Also, there is the community 300 international CC plus community core heart. And I am a co-founder and co-organizer. I also am one of the strategic developments for the six countries for the automation. A small company called DPI Solutions with their 40 or more personnel, and I'm a co-founder, and I'm also doing stuff on the quality assurance. So here's the agenda. What we're going to discuss today. The present starts with very actually unexpected pictures. You may ask, who is this? What's it all about? You may not believe, but this is the first picture to the opera, Count Igor. Uh, not so many people saw that opera about Count Igor, but this is an opera consisting of four parts, lasting more than four hours. And if we add up a break, then it's five hours of a good quality opera. Our agenda today is also quite long, and we are going to use it, and we are going to use these pictures. We'll talk about their tasks and challenges which we face. We'll discuss the minimum toolkit to solve these tasks. We'll uh, discuss the extended instrumentation kit. After that, I'll bring a couple of examples and uh, how the instruments could be applied to solve the tasks. Altogether, the agenda consists of six parts, so it's even more important and more serious than the opera about Igor the Count. The classical challenges which we are facing is that, first of all, we have to form a team. After this, we have to motivate them and help them develop, irrespective of how motivated they are. First, we help them to develop in their tasks and develop so that they are kept within the company. Next, we need to build a system to delegate tasks and effectively control the exclusion. To establish communication is also important and do many other tasks. The problems that may happen are different. And there is no single answer to these questions because there are different methodologies how to fold them, such as agile, waterfall. These methodologies use different toolkits and solve the tasks in a different way. There are too many contexts, and we have to solve the tasks within a particular project, a particular account, functional department, company and we have to follow industrial standards. That's why the answer will be either very precise or it will be quite vague. By the way, there is no tailor-made solution because there are too many contexts. That's why we first of all have to understand what basic concepts a task consists of. Knowing this, we'll be able to understand how it works and to solve the tasks. I like physical, absurd of physical laws. I like seven Miller's rules, which says that usually a human brain is able to process seven plus minus two elements at the same time and cannot process more. That is why when we are selecting a certain toolkit or when we are stating a ground rule or whatever we do, there should not be more than seven elements. Best of all, if there are only five elements. Otherwise, if we try to establish an ideal perfect system in our minds, 
it won't keep in our hearts. It will be just simply falling out of our hearts. That is why we need a very simple framework, which is easy, which we can embrace and understand in our brains. We start with facilitation because we have to make decisions jointly. Facilitation is a necessary ecosystem and infrastructure for a decision making process. It seems to be very simple, and such thing as mind map or visual. So, if we follow the principle, divide and rule, then it means we would have to split into groups, disseminate the stickers, and game. And it's impossible to manage a company without facilitation. When we talk about communication management, we talk about the basics. Let's say we decided to build up a session and we intend to facilitate this session, this workshop. We have everything. We have the pencils, we have the board, we have stickers on board, but it's not enough. It's important to take preliminary steps. Agenda has to be prepared, indicating the participants of the meeting, definition of the readiness of our meeting. Maybe we place the questions not in the right way. They are not clearly stated. Maybe we didn't get all the documentation. Maybe we didn't get responses from the customers or any third parties. Maybe we just don't have a reason to meet. Another point is that we need to define the data, we need to get the data definition, because we may be talking for a couple of hours, two hours, three hours, but how do we know that we reached a minimum acceptable result? That's why we need to know who, what, why, the preconditions to start, preconditions to finish, agenda, a list of factions, one, two, three, and limits for each particular step. It all seems quite simple, but if there is no facilitation and uh, the basics of communication management, it's not going to work in any QA management. The same. It was asked, what will happen if we are writing emails to the customers and expect the answer? The answer is needed and the customer doesn't reply. Then we just write a classical follow-up and write explicitly in the follow-up that if we do not get the answer within three days, we assume that you agree. We add this email in the contract, uh, this wording in the contract. That's why we get a set of rules which give us the framework for our function. All these are just basics of communication management, and this will not work whatever methodology we use. The first thing that uh, we have to do with any Okay, startup is to define the ground rules. In order to define those, we need micro communication management, micro agenda, just for 15 minutes, three points, but it still is just the simplest but facilitation. With ground rules, there are examples, um, they can be anything just anything, but we have to define the rules of the games. For example, that we are all responsible for the quality, that we have some shared responsibility. This is the responsibility of everybody, not of just Ivanov or Petrov or whatever. And uh, we have some penalties, and these penalties have to be organized directly by the team are much worse than that initiated by the manager. Manager can be very angry, but you just ignore him. But if uh, it's uh, on the part of the team of your colleagues, uh, if they make jokes on you, or criticize you, so that you will not survive more than a month in such an environment. So we need some ground rules. And what if we forget everything? But we define uh, the main rules. And if we forget something, then there is the next stage, iteration, feedback review. So we make a draft. And then maybe, OK, for example, in a week, we are missing something in our ground rules. Committing. There is five minutes limi limit. We provide all necessary conditions for facilitation and then we declare ground rules. Then nothing would work without 
make a so the you as a manager um, take some responsibilities and there are objective reasons why you cannot come for example on weekend to, and they say you made the promise so you work on weekend but we, you took over the responsibility on our behalf without uh, letting us know thinking smarter than us although you're not actually doing this not testing okay. so you took over the responsibility so you have to be responsible for it and same if you arrange it in a way that after every artifact uh, there is make a commitment phrase then like every, nobody forced you so if you agree to ground rules well if you have any doubts on that then you have to express doubts and um, at the facilitation session we'll try to clear doubts if the doubts are very vague i cannot them make a commitment and then uh, we'll get um, until formulate your doubts please and everybody approved of that then you have all the rights like moral rights and uh, also your conscience is clear and uh, also if your conscious still if it's very flexible, if it's like yoga, match can take any position, then of course this is not very honest person and uh, nobody would establish some serious relations with him. And um, if a person is like that, so if he is fired, so, but if it was the decision of the whole team, then people would not criticize you for that. It's different from if you just uh, fire somebody just on your own and everybody criticizes you, not him or the person who was behaving in a proper way. So there are some concepts in agile methodology, for example, sprints. I think everybody knows how to work at the sprint number 125 and everything is already moving. Uh, but how to work with the first sprint and what to do with the zero sprint is even more difficult. And if there is minus first sprint, what to do with that? And uh, these things are quite simple, but we need value and we need vision for that. And uh, we have to start with something very simple. And all the approaches I already mentioned, so you can spend five minutes or five hours for that, but working at a big project, even five hours is not wasted time. So you just define some values which will be changed, which will be different in different teams. This, for example, like values defined by EPAM company. A value as the individual, so you're not just a pawn, act as a team, you have to strive for excellence. You have to try to provide not just medium quality but high quality solution we have to be focused on the customer and think of that otherwise one makes code just because he likes uh, coding another one testing because he likes testing etc but it's like becomes very unorganized and act with integrity uh, so you as young enthusiastic specialists have different values from all the persons, but you have to formulate uh, your values quite clearly. Because, for example, your value I want to develop as an independent specialist. That's okay, but also you have to work in a team. Probably excellence, you won't manage that because you have a startup and you have to launch a product as soon as possible to the market and uh, do it within the budget because the money 
is limited. So then strive for excellence is not good for you. Then you have to formulate the value that your task is to do like uh, it quickly, better but worse. So and uh, with several iterations you formulate these values, then you make a commitment, you sign under all these values, and then you as manager have a tool like it don't work in the team. You have formulated the values to with us, not the indeed. You have to its values to use them. So same, yeah. So the, it's quite a difficult technical solution. Say, okay, wait. What was your first value? I want to develop as a technical expert. I'm young and full of energy. If, for example, so you have to be very well oriented, otherwise you become schizophrenic. And uh, when we work on the project, sometimes we are not aware of that. I mean, people might assume that this is for millionaires, pensioners, that this for for tablets, but there is some vision about the product, but this vision should be much simpler, and we have to formulate it for the customer. Because uh, sometimes the customer doesn't have vision, because he is very well aware of the business model, but he doesn't know how the product should be for verification. And then if he says that it's okay, then we can start working on that. And together, we want. So how to do it? Uh, how to cooperate? Have you watched the Game of Thrones? The last series? Yeah. It was very stupid things. First, when they were preparing all this from the hell uh, were training how to fight with a sword but normally with a sword you cannot use any skill you don't have to be trained you cannot do it as with a uh, skewer it's a sword. Sword is a very simple thing. So, and um, you have to know how to match properly. And uh, it's much better than the fencing. And uh, also, uh, they were. Uh, there was an episode uh, when there was a big city and uh, they tried to occupy it. But, for example, Hannibal, when in he approached Rome, uh, he couldn't uh, actually occupy it. Because if you know, nobody actually used this very sophisticated skill of fighting at that time uh, because uh, these people use very simple methods they know only how to march and how to uh, beat the drum but don't have modern weapons you won't uh, intrude the city with the wall and it's the same. Uh, if we don't know how to march and beat the drum, I mean, we don't have common vision and uh, use nothing. But if you take young guys just, who just and uh, teach them how to beat the drum, but basically teach them composition, much better than you. Uh, have anybody of you heard about the Shuhari principle? That's good. So what is that? We got it from the fighting martial arts from karate. That's when we blindly follow the rules. 
Мы сшиваем годами, подводы, и все, 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 It's like when we get some critical mass of practical experience and now we understand finally when we why we do that. And the last phase when you can set up your own marital arts school and then you can deviate from the standard. Not earlier than that. Say very good example for that is the Scrum. It was implemented then to sprint. Uh, after two sprints, you understand something is not working. And we think, okay, we have very specific project, very specific company. You just uh, say anything and then add specific to it. And then we uh, get directly to the third stage when we debate from the standard so then we use scrum like of our own like it takes two hours this missing that missing planning is also different but actually any innovation integrated into test management three months is the least first three months just follow the rules or even half a year or even more than that otherwise you'll fail You won't be able to have a test run to learn how to use it, to improve it. That's why standards, even within these agile methodologies, they have to be followed very strictly. It's a very important rule. The next uh, principle is the open kimono principle. Without um, knowing the Japanese culture, we think that, oh, well, we know that you can hide weapons, in the kimono, so people think that you are disarmed and your employees think that they shouldn't be afraid of you. Maybe I was very lucky to have good uh, colleagues, or maybe I had good physical training in the school, but uh, I never was afraid of uh, manager. So some people, when they receive a call from the manager, they are really confused. They are all in cold sweat. But it's actually normal when an employee is not afraid of you if you're a manager. And this is the first thing. The second thing is when manager is not afraid of an employee, when you don't have you when you approach your employee, but hold your knife back. It's not normal. So, it's like more shame. And then people don't like to get They are really afraid of getting into this situation. You know, it's something that we don't have. And in Japan, for example, people normally don't have hairs on the uh, uh, body. And uh, they value that. When you have... Uh, <clears throat> hairs on the chest it, it's considered to be something really attractive and uh, they even had uh, special like weeks uh, for the chest it's like uh, Stas Misail Mahalev would be very popular there with his uh, cross on the chest which is lost in the hair and uh, Uh, this is the week, and uh, if uh, no, somebody understands that it's just a week, they lose the trust to you. And uh, the trust of the employees is like playing with this week. And uh, I try to build this trust. For example, I don't lock my PC 
in the office, so any employee can actually get access to it. But this is how we build trust. So this is this are several things which we can actually do. It uh, doesn't cost any money. It's not like paying additional bonus to them, but still it helps. And uh, I think that any manager has to follow these principles, like delegating. Delegation is the next uh, method. Look at this nice picture. It's, it's a nice one, but it's not correct. There are important parts of the delegation. Delegation doesn't work without supporting methodology. There should be a principle of the open kimono, meaning you you don't have to be afraid to delegate and to hand over responsibility to somebody being a manager without offending with 20 follow-up trips. Secondly, it should be transparent. All team members must understand what you are doing. Being a manager, you don't have to sit in your room locked, hiding behind the wall when nobody even understands what you are doing. Ideally, you have to understand what each level does and you should understand it. And you should understand that uh, within the competence scope for each level, you are taking out certain tasks and you will need to learn to know them once you reach another level. So a delegation should not go from the bottom, should go from the top. When somebody comes and tells me, OK, you, guy, I'll give you to do this, that, and that. Delegating means that when Mr. X comes to you and tells you, I know that you are doing the report on this, on that, and I'm in copy, when receiving them, it seems to me that you are preparing these reports based on certain sources and you have the targets of these sources, but then let me do these reports myself and I will then to send it to you for verification. This is what delegation is about, but it's not going to work if it's not transparent and if it doesn't follow the principle of the open kimono. It is true there will be pair work, there will be a lot of kind of control, but still there are different things. How to you, how can you, how you can delegate? Well, now the right to make mistakes. None of the initiative is going to work if a person is punished for making it. Possibility. If you make a mistake, you no, I'm not going to take this. That's why one has to have a right to make a mistake. In France, it's quite a business to transfer mistakes. An employee made an but such an employee won't be laid off in their accounting balance. This in losses will be considered to be like an okay, investment, and we will put $8 million in training of this particular employee. It's very expensive, and hopefully he will not commit such a mistake again. I hope he will behave in the right way, and it will be a shame for him to make the same mistake again. So that's why we need to establish the culture where making a mistake is not a problem. But to show it for the employees, then the manager himself should tell the ones, yes, I admit I made a mistake. I didn't consider certain facts, and he had to admit it. Two experiments with the monkeys can help us in our everyday work. One experiment is that any kind of an initiative usually goes from top to bottom, but never works from bottom to top. How did they test it? Well, there were certain monkeys. The monkeys were not given enough food. There's a cage, opens easily, and the junior monkey is trained to open the cage. It opens, however, it is not supposed to be small. Then this uh, monkey is being bitten, and their head of the monkey's group gets a banana. So then during the experiment, they added the middle monkey and more
more junior monkeys, it didn't work because the skill is being lost. But as soon as the high-ranked monkey repeats, does it, the rest repeats. Because it's a shame if he repeats some actions after a junior. But if he repeats something after a, after a highly-ranked species, then it's a different way. That's why it is important to train and to do something on a higher level. I'm telling this. So if you start from yourself, we'll guarantee that such a tool or any initiatives could be implemented if you start to change yourself. A second important experiment performed with the monkeys feels like this. Okay, why should I bother and work that hard? But then I change for another project in my team, or maybe I'll change my job, and all these efforts will be in vain. This is not true. One experiment proved that if a monkey has a container with bananas, an open, an open box or an open bowl, but as soon as the monkey picks up one, then the monkey is being splashed with uh, cold water from a hose. The monkeys have been trying in different ways to reach out for a banana, but it didn't work. So, but as soon as the junior monkey was put in the cage and started to reach out for a banana, the local ones, those who were there in the cage, say, okay, where are you going? In the end, in the cage, there were monkeys that were never splashed with water, but for them, there was a rule that however hungry, the monkey feels it is not allowed to pick up a banana. Nobody knows why, because the, the older monkeys are no longer available, no longer in the place. It's just the rule. So you see, even our team rotates, and even we ourselves leave our team, but then there's a critical number of those who keep the knowledge, the system will remain. Uh, let's talk about neuro linguistic programming, because even me, personally, myself, is not competent enough to talk about this. But as uh, an example, have you read the novel by Remark, No Changes in the Western Front? It was popular. It was extremely popular. He got millions of letters from millions of people saying that story about us. I really heard it. Are you really describing the division number 125? Why is it so? It's so because only one pronoun was used in that novel. We, we soldiers, we brothers, we are together. It should be in the same way in the work we do, because if we say, okay, Ivanov made a fault, I am a project manager and I did this project, Petrov was a good one, and okay, that nice lady Svetlana, she's just a beautiful girl. As soon as you hear this, you'll never have a good joint team. That's why you have to say this is our success, this is our work, and this is most likely my fault, because it's me, being a manager, forgot about something. You have to say the guilt is on my side, but the success is ours. Sometimes when you hear experienced managers talking, when they say, my guys, my team, they do that. I have an impression that I'm listening to the slave traders talking, but we are living another time. It's not a kind of the black guys talking to the slave owner, so do not use the wording of being a master. I, I really like it when I'm telling this, okay, I need to go and get somebody pushed. I don't want to be pushed. I can't even imagine that I'm being pushed. But when people start communicating, it becomes a habit. It becomes their language. But this completely destroys the whole structure because you you have been working for half a year trying to establish the quality, but then you pushed Mr. Ivanov. And then it destroys the whole system. Recently, one company was helping a community to develop, and uh, a girl, a lady, who was an employee of a company was saying, okay, I'm slightly pushing the community. 
but it doesn't sound the right way. Sometimes it's just something really, really small, but on a psychological level, you hear this, you understand it, you perceive it, and such things either help you to establish the good management system or doesn't. And I'd like to add some good spices. We need to have the competency model. It should be simple. You could take it thanks to facilitation and you developed it with the help of facilitation, but you should have a very simple, at least simple competence model. It's good if your company is grown up enough to have such a model. You also need metrics. Bad metrics are better than no metrics at all. They don't have to be final, don't have to be too detailed. You have to start with some minimum set, but the metrics have to be present. Also, there is a um, very big difference between a leader and a manager. So these are two completely different roles. Normally these are two, completely different persons, having different have different psychologies, different types, and uh, sometimes it's combined in one person, but this is a person with two roles. Normally you are a manager, and then you have to delegate the tasks of a leader to others, and if you are a leader, then delegate managerial tasks to others. So the difficult part of that is that becoming a leader, you can improve but just to become a leader is difficult and it's a uh, whole list of qualities sometimes people in just one meter six centimeters high they play basketball if and some of them succeed but others they just are like very mediocre basketball players and if they would wrestle they would be champions so, and they just waste time do you know these people in the screen so, that's uh, like from the left to the right it's like uh, says caesar uh, sula then on the other side makitonsky Zhukov, and two persons you probably know and uh, what is common in all these people what do you think if we show it to a child what who doesn't know them what would he say so okay smile they are not smiling some of them are not smiling the chin right the chin that's right because the level of hormones influences the jaws and uh, the cheekbones, they have uh, same chins. And that's why, you know, like in literature, writers use the word like uh, heavy jaw. And uh, the most brave characters are normally with these heavy jaws. And, uh, that's why this uh, manager, who was considered to be completely crazy, and uh, his job was like that. He was a very charismatic person, and, and we cannot uh, grow chin. We can grow some other things, in, increase them, extend them, but it's difficult to do that with the jaw. It, even plastic surgery might not help. So if we are leaders, it's not good or bad, it's just a fact. We can grow, but we have to understand that it's better to become a very good manager than uh, I will be a mediocre manager. Well, I'm sorry, leader. So, what is uh, the conclusion of that? So, leader, same as manager, can start with something small. If you ask your team to work on the weekend, make a commitment, then of course they will do that. But uh, go to the department store, buy some food for them, make a lunch for them maybe a red cover, be like a mother, otherwise you won't build a good motivated team. 
Also, the problem of role and title is always there. And also, I propose to make two examples. You will do it on your own, as we don't have time for that. There is interview best practices uh, exercise. And uh, also, there is another one, motivational factors. The first one is about how to make interviews. And... Uh, Try to fulfill it today at home or after the conference. Think of that, make a list of recommendations, and you will see the list formulated in the same way uh, offered by me and Martin. So compare them. It doesn't mean that this or that them is better or worse. They are just been developed for different contexts. But this will be a good practical exercise. And also we raised a number of issues. How, how to form a team, for example. You see the list of practices mentioned today. So just think how these practices can be used to resolve each of these problems and stress the ones that are extremely like, useful, the highest priority. And uh, I think that will be a very good result of our today's presentation if you fix the experience you got in practice. Thank you for your patience. We don't have uh, time for questions. Okay, so only two questions. Well, I have two T-shirts and two questions. That was the. Uh, it was planned actually. A cunning plan. So, thank you for your presentation. My only question is that you mentioned the distribution of roles inside a team. How testers can share the information share the responsibility, the roles. So my question is, for example, if there is some negative, like, it's like historically from, and that's, uh, that can be resolved by uh, by what? Like, uh, the transparency and uh, common accessibility that are two different things. Everybody has to understand what is going on, what each of us is doing. And of course, as managers, we have to filter the information. And also, the negative that been formed with time, we have to understand why for example, why there was a conflict a year ago between Ivanov and Petrov, or why have you taken some technical decision now it's not working. So we have to start with a slate, clean slate, and like in literature there is uh, like uh, proverb saying uh, we shouldn't uh, soar the soul dust. So that's why sometimes it's better to start from a clean slate and uh, try to neutralize the negative, the conflict, if it's possible. Uh, please, welcome. Thank you for your presentation, that was really cool. And I have a question, like, for example, you come to work in a company where everything is already fixed, well-tuned, this is the policy of the company, and uh, it doesn't match the principles that you use in your work. And that's a good question. I would, what I would do, like following the principles is, for example, one of these is like shuhari, right? So after joining the company for three months, you have to follow all the rules, rules blindly. And uh, probably you will understand that um, there are some reasons for that. 
придет понимание, and, когда uh, здесь будет локализовать проблему, понять, что с ним будет делать. And these are like some pitfalls, because otherwise you won't notice some problems that might be there. And uh, if uh, you understand that there are some drawbacks in the process normally used by the company, then you make a commitment, you try to formulate new rules, you justify your proposals to the management, and you don't break the rules, but you do it step by step, efficiently, and uh, that's how you improve the new environment gradually, because the rules are there not just for the sake of the rules. Sometimes they might look strange, but probably sometimes you just uh, take one nail from the house and it falls down. That was the only thing that fixed it. So now I give two t-shirts to to ladies who asked questions. Thank you. Thank you for participation. I hope that you will try to use it all in practice.